Hey, what's up? Today's recipe is all about the asparagus. It's asparagus season. It is available now just about everywhere. And asparagus is very, very Greek. In fact, it's so bountiful in Greece, it grows wild. It's, it's like everywhere. So I was lucky enough to find the thinner stocked asparagus, like the ones that are available in Greece. And I was, I was like thrilled. It was awesome. They have a little bit of a sweeter uh, flavor to them, and they are absolutely delicious. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these and kind of sort them out and cut them to where I don't need the woody part at the bottom. As well, I'm going to fire up my stove here to broil. I want to get that preheating because what we're going to do is we're going to do our sfungato, or my Greek-style frittata, with the uh, asparagus starting on stovetop and ending in the uh, oven. So first things first, I'm going to get my asparagus going. I'm using about a pound of asparagus and I want that, that heavy asparagus flavor. I absolutely love it. Trick. I've got here a screaming hot pan. No oil, no nothing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these to here. The rest of these fronds I'm going to save for the top and a little presentation. So I'm just going to take these here, put them in, and you can see it's already sizzling. By dry roasting or dry frying the asparagus, you're going to bring out a certain sweet nuttiness to it. It's absolutely fantastic, crazy good. I'm gonna season with a little bit of salt, a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper, and that's it for now. Just let this kind of char along and bring out all its natural flavors. Now the next thing to go in is some green onion. I'm using four green onions. I find that green onions work better in these kind of recipes than uh, regular white or red onions or yellow onions. They give a milder uh, onion flavor. Uh, you could also use leeks as well for this. So I'm just going to cut these greens and all just like that. Get these ready. Now here comes the olive oil which is going to actually get everything uh, going here. And for this, I'm going to do, no joke, about a quarter cup. It's sickening when, when I hear people talking about one or two tablespoons of nature's like beauty here, this Greek gold. It is absolutely fantastic. Not only does it act as a lubricant in your cooking, it also adds so much flavor. So that's perfect right there. So I'm going to take my green onions, put those in as well, get those going. The next thing here is red pepper. I'm going to take half a red pepper, half I'm going to save for the top for a little garnish. It's going to look absolutely beautiful. And then this part here, I'm just going to slice real quick. You don't need any mad ninja knife skills. Cut it any way that you can. So these are going to go in there as well. And already we've got beautiful colors happening here. I'm going to punch it up with so many veggies in there. It's going to be not only delicious, but it's also going to be very nutritious. I'm going to take one of these eggplants, these long ones. They call them Asian. I call them delicious, whatever. So all you're going to do is just cut it, half it, just like that, and just start hacking it up. This will also add uh, body to our dish. Going all over the place here with this. Lastly, for a little bit of meatiness to this, I got some button mushrooms, just the plain Jane uh, white mushrooms. Here's the thing, you're going to hear a lot of people telling you that you shouldn't, uh, you know, wash or clean your mushrooms and yada, yada, yada. In my world, dirt is dirt. If they're dirty, you should clean them or wash them. Now, with these, I found as well, my personal opinion, that 
The simpler mushrooms, like the, the white button mushrooms, they taste better when they're in bigger pieces. So for a mushroom that's like an average size like this, I would just basically half it. That's all you really need. Perfect. So right now, this is pretty plain Jane. Time to add a little flavoring to this. So I'm going to do about a generous teaspoon of fennel. Fennel seed is awesome when it comes to dishes like this. I'm going to take a little bit of thyme, maybe half a teaspoon. I'm going to go into this as well. Very, very beautiful, beautiful flavor. And of course, some smoky paprika. And again, a ah, tablespoon. So now, just saute these down for maybe five or six minutes just to soften them up and we'll be ready to go to the next step. My veggies are well on their way. Time to get to the next step, which is the actual egg part. Now, for this, I'm using four eggs. You can use three, two, six, whatever you like will totally work. So just crack eggs very simply. Pinch of salt will go in my eggs pinch of pepper. Now here is the next part after this. People will argue all the time. I like a little cream in my scrambled eggs or when I make uh, this type of dish. So I'm going to add some cream. If you don't want to add cream, that's totally fine. That is totally up to you. But I like generous amounts of cream. I think it adds a little bit of luxury uh, to this. Just break up my yolks. And just pour this over like it's that simple. Make sure you get a nice even coating everywhere. Just like that. Push everything down into this egg goodness. Perfect. And no Greek style omelet or sfugato would be complete without the feta. And for this I'm just going to take maybe... 50, 60, 80 grams of feta and just crumble it over the top. It's going to add not only flavor, but it's also going to be used as a seasoning, which is really, really awesome. And don't you see on the feta, it's all flavor. Now, remember the top part of our fronds, our asparagus fronds? Well, I'm going to lay these out like this on the top for a little bit of zhuzh. It actually looks like you actually made an effort when you make this dish. Remember the other half of our red pepper. Real nice and easy. Take this, put this in between like that, and look at this beautiful pattern that's happening here. And not only is it beautiful, it is going to be freaking delicious. That's it, ready to go. You're going to leave this on the stove top at a lower or reduced heat for maybe a couple, three minutes just for it to set on the bottom. Once it sets on the bottom like it is now, what I'm going to do is pop it into my broiler or under my broiler for maybe three or four minutes, just enough time to have it charred on top, have the feta melting and oozy, and it is going to be absolutely magnificent. All right, showtime, baby. Check this out. This is absolutely fantastic. All that just unctuous deliciousness on top. This isn't actually burnt by any means. My asparagus, my red pepper has charred a little bit, which is exactly what I want. The feta has melted completely into uh, the, the, the eggs. But wait, there's more. This would not be complete without a nice dollop of Greek yogurt in the middle. It, let me just turn this off now. Take a little bit of Greek yogurt and just 
a healthy dollop of Greek yogurt right in the middle. Just like that. Perfect. So time to make it happen, Captain. Let me grab a plate here. And hopefully this won't give me too much of a problem coming out. Even though it's going to be like runny, that's totally cool. Not bad. Yogurt ran a little bit. What are you going to do? So let me just grab my knife and just start cutting into this. I want to take a nice little piece and show you guys how this turned out. And this is good for like breakfast, it's good for lunch, brunch, whatever. It is totally, totally fine. Scoop this bill. Look at that. That is absolutely divine. Got a nice big chunk of mushroom there. Everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. It is absolutely gorgeous. Very nice. Oh my, mmm. 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 That is so damn good. Mmm. And because of the technique of this recipe, it's about half the time of a traditional uh, frittata or sfungato. Typically what they do is they, they mix it all up, put it in the pan, and bake it for like 20 to 30 minutes at like 375. In this case, we start it off on the stovetop, put it under the broiler, and it's done in literally three or four minutes. That's it. And it is absolutely stunning. So that's it for this episode. I thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys try this. In fact, I invite you to try this and send me the pics. Tag me in this on social media, whatever. I love seeing what you create. So until next time, Please take care of yourselves and each other. Stay safe. And as always, I will see you on the next one. Much love. Bye for now.